Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, we have a special that I pulled out of the trash. Linear actuator. So, I figured, I've never pulled one of these apart before on this channel, and I always talk about them, so this would be an excellent opportunity to get into the dirty, which is why I'm wearing gloves, and we're gonna pull this guy apart. Now honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with this one. I've seen it in the trash, and I bet you it's either because A, somebody doesn't know where it belongs, or B, they don't know how to troubleshoot it properly. So, we're gonna get right into it. Linear actuators, they consist of a motor assembly, a transmission assembly, and some sort of movement, okay? And this one appears to have, yep. Okay, so this one has an Acme screw. You can see it right there. We're gonna go ahead and pull this guy apart. See what we got. You can see that we have three different wires. We have a white, a uh, black, and a red, and a green, which is gonna be ground. And this one here is gonna be either a speed sensor or it's gonna be a position sensor. I bet it's a position sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up. We're gonna take a look. Coming up next, right here, I'm Better Biomed. Okay guys, the first thing we need to do to take this guy apart, we're gonna have to pull off the end cap right here, and I bet that this end cap has got the speed sensor underneath it. Oh yes, oh man, there's quite a bit going on in there. So I have to use these pliers, pull out the grommet. We're just gonna take this guy off thread the wires through, like so. All right, and we have a capacitor, which means that this guy is gonna be a split phase induction motor. And actually there's a couple other giveaways. So I have a couple limit switches down here, and these are hard limit switches. And what they're gonna do is they're going to disconnect and reconnect the windings inside so that it can only go in a certain direction. So in other words, it's going to disconnect the clockwise winding and it's going to put the capacitor in a uh, series with the windings and it, it's going to make it only run counterclockwise. So that's what this little guy does right here is uh, normal windings would run clockwise. But what it does is by putting this guy in there, it tricks one of the phases into 90 degrees ahead, and that's going to actually put it in a counterclockwise rotation. So that's what that guy does. And these two micro switches that are controlling the, the disconnection and connection of the phases, they are going to hit you know, what looks like a nylon um, eccentric cam. So that's gonna be your limits. Is this guy's gonna rotate around, hit a certain uh, limit switch, disconnect it, and then the other coil. So if you're if you're hitting like bed up on the remote, it's gonna run until it hits that switch. Then the up rotation, which is gonna be clockwise, will no longer work. So your only option is to go counterclockwise, right? To lower the bed back down. And that is how we do not run into problems with this guy. Because you can see, that this guy right here, it has a bolt through design, how it connects to the equipment, and there's a bolt through design right here, and it moves whatever it is up and down by screwing and unscrewing it using this Acme threaded rod right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy off because it goes through a Preston bearing right here. So it's gonna be like a carrier bearing it doesn't actually hold the rod, it just kind of holds it in the middle. Wow. So this one here has probably got what, five or six inches worth of throw in and out. Wow, seems to be pretty long. There we go, there we go, okay. So it looks like it's a six, six inch. Okay. 
So the way to get into the transmission housing, it's going to have four, five, and I'm actually surprised that there's not another screw down here that's blind, but it doesn't. It's only got the five around the perimeter. So let's go ahead and pull those out right now. <clears throat> All right, and this guy right here, looks like it's connected to a potentiometer and that's going to tell probably the microprocessor its limits up or down. It's gonna be this little guy right here which is directly connected to the transmission on the underside. We're gonna see that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and pull it apart. There's probably a little nylon gear that, that keeps it indexed. Oh, wow. All right. Look at that grease. That looks like a very thick grease. Oh yeah, that's a very sticky grease. I hope the camera's picking up how messy that stuff really is. And, ah, right there. So right here is the little gear that I was talking about that keeps those micro switches in check. You can hear it connecting and disconnecting, those little micro switches. And that's going to turn on or shut off this little uh, capacitor, it's gonna put it in series with the coils. And what that guy does is by connecting and disconnecting those micro switches, it's going to be putting this guy in series with the windings, which is going to shift the magnetic field 90 degrees, which is going to change the rotation of the motor. So this is in fact an induction motor. There's a uh, gear reduction. You can see right here, you got your pinion gear, comes here to a nylon gear, and then to a final output drive. And it says it's 25 to one. Wow, so that's a pretty powerful little motor actually. And one of the interesting things is you can see how slowly your gears here are gonna spin and interface with your micro switches right here. So there's not very much movement. It's gonna, it's gonna spin many, many times before one rotation of these little gears over here. So what I'm doing right here, that would take maybe a hundred spins of the main shaft. All right, let's see. Okay, I see some signs of wear here on the um, rear of the main shaft. And it looks like the centered bronze bushing right here it's got some heat marks on there and it looks like it's a little bit dried out. So I bet you what was happening is this guy was making some noise when it was going up and down and they, instead of opening it up, they decided to get a whole new part when in fact, it looks like the overall condition of the shaft and the bushing are really good. All they had to do is take some extra grease, stick it down in there and if anything, you know that you can re-impregnate some of these bushings by heating them up and then applying lubrication to them and it allows it to suck into the pores. But it's always easier to buy a new part, right? This guy looks like it's almost brand new and here uh, they changed it out. Oh well, I guarantee you this part here was probably at least a thousand dollars, at least. So that just goes to show you how much waste we have in medical All right well I can see the rear I can see the rear bearing looks like it's in excellent condition looks like there's some thrust washers underneath and I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy back together now one thing is absolutely for sure is because I was sitting there playing around with this little nylon gear that's controlling your uh, potentiometer and also your index points of those nylon gears, I didn't see any timing marks on here. I would assume that there are some, someplace, maybe. But I pretty much messed up the timing, so I would have to manually do this like all over again. So if you guys ever open one of these up, do not touch the gears because you're gonna be modifying the timing and that's gonna be a big no-go. So let's go ahead and put this guy back together because we are gonna open up the main motor and take a look at the rotor and see if the rotor is damaged. 
Okay, so you heard that little click. That is me very cautiously guiding this guy back to his home position because there's all those ends of the shafts that have to line up in their holes and the gears have to mesh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully put a couple of these Phillips head screws in, one on each side, basically to hold the gear train together so that I can give it a once over inspection. Now you wanna check the gaps all the way around, make sure there's no pinched wires like these. Make sure that the gap isn't just wide at one side. That would indicate that maybe the gears aren't meshed correctly. So make sure that everything's meshed up nice and neat before you go ahead and put the rest of the screws in. And definitely don't tack them down all at once. So when I, I put motors together and stuff, I usually like to use hand tools because it gives me a more tactile feel for in case something's really going wrong. Plus this is aluminum castings I'm screwing into. So you don't wanna like cross thread them or anything. You cross thread these, you're in some real trouble. All right, so now that they're all tacked down, I'm gonna give it just a little tap. All right, and now let's go ahead and pull this motor apart, man. I'm kind of excited about that. So there's two long screws here on the back side. And we gotta be careful when we take this rear cap off because there's probably some sort of thrust washer in there, which is gonna preload the, uh, the rear bearing to the shaft, kind of force the shaft down. So we gotta be really careful that we don't lose any parts when we pull this rear shaft off. There we go. All right. Okay, and right here is the rotor because it spins, it rotates. That's why it's called the rotor. It's got, looks like really quality bearings on there. Really nice. Look at that, it spins and spins and spins. So the bearings are good. It looks like the uh, shaft gear is machined. It looks like it's really nice. No wear marks, no heat marks. And this is exactly what I thought it was. This is going to be a split phase induction motor. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so split phase induction motor. You have two windings which are going to be wrapped around one another. And like I said, they're gonna be 90 degrees apart from one another. And what happens is you're normally running with two windings and then when you hit the limit switch, then it puts this capacitor in series, and when it does that, now you're running 90 degrees off from what you were, and now your motor is gonna be running in reverse. So that's how it reverses direction. So basically, you're gonna run this all the way out until it gets near the end, and you don't want it unscrewing it, or you don't want it crashing into the base, so it's gonna disconnect that winding, and now your only other option is the other direction on your remote control, so you just run it down until it hits your other micro switch down here. And now your only option is to go the opposite direction. Kind of a simple solution, very analog. Very neat. So this one right here, I believe this is a thermal fuse. Yeah, I think so. So I think it's a thermal fuse right here on the coils. All the coils are beautiful condition. All the leaves down there, in the uh, cage look like they're excellent. There's no signs of heat. So I bet you, I bet you this guy runs. I bet you it runs just fine. Here, let me very carefully put this guy back to where it belongs. Yep, the rotor, there's no holes in the cap or anything to allow it to breathe, so it's a sealed component. Looks like it's in excellent condition. No rub marks. All right, there we go. Just make sure it seats down in there. Put your bolts back in. There 
All right. Notice I'm not screwing it all the way down. Just like before with motors, you wanna make sure that you move it around a little bit. You want it to go down nice and even. And then I'll give it a little tap. All right. So guys, what do you think? Think I should plug it in and try it out? Because this is a split phase, we can run off one coil and then I should be able to switch the hotline over to the other coil and we should get a reverse of direction. Let's do it. This looks very exciting. And I, I'll go ahead and leave this open so we can take a look at it. That'd be fun. Just gotta be aware of hot connections. That's a lot of threads on this guy. Now you can see why I'm wearing the gloves too. Everything's covered with a thin layer of this grease. I knew it was gonna be a messy job. Okay, here we go. Clean my hands a little bit. And I have a power cord right here and a couple jumper wires. So we got our jumper wires. I'm going to go ahead and connect one to white. Here we go. And let's connect one to red. All right. Let's make sure that those two stay separate. <laughs> so avoid fireworks at all costs. All right, and this is one method I use for um, testing. I'll use these type of jumper cables and I will connect them straight into an IEC outlet. So connect that one in, connect that one in. Mind you, it's not plugged in at the moment. And for the moment of truth, here, let's make sure that this guy doesn't go hot on me. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one. Holy cow, this motor works absolutely fine. Take a look at that. How cool is that? So now I'm gonna disconnect it and we are gonna reverse one of the leads. So we're gonna disconnect the red. Come on, let go. And we're gonna connect it to the black. And it should be running the opposite direction. Ready? Three, two, one. Hey, there we go. Guys, that is the beauty to the split phase induction motor. So all it takes is one little capacitor, it reverses the direction, and we are good to go. How cool is that? Anyway, guys, there you have it. This motor was absolutely fine. I have no idea what was in the trash. There is a very good chance that somebody didn't know how to diagnose it correctly. And by that, maybe I should show you guys how to diagnose these motors. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna ohm out the coils, all right? So let's disconnect my test jig. Make sure that this guy's not plugged in. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I've been electrocuted. All right, here, let's go ahead and get you guys a better look. Okay, can you see it? Yes, it can, good. Check our leads. Okay. So, the black wire here is going to the capacitor, right? So that one is gonna throw you a curveball when it comes to your meter. So let's connect the white and the red. I mean, obviously I already plugged it in. I know it runs. 18.3 ohms. Beautiful. Okay. And remember now we're going to reverse it. Let's go through the capacitor. 47.5. That's to be expected because it's going through the capacitor. Like I said, this motor was probably trouble shot wrong and because it was misdiagnosed, they just put a new motor in. 
probably didn't solve the problem now that you think about it. But guys, that's a linear actuator in a nutshell. Now, mind you, they're different linear actuators can have different methods. They might have an integrated uh, controller mechanism, which will control you know, their movement speed. And if it's a stepper motor, some of them will be stepper, some of them will be closed loop. This one is a closed loop because not only does it have the directions, but it has this guy here, which is your feedback, which goes back to the microcontroller. And it tells it, hey, I met my limit, or hey, I'm going fast or slow or whatever. So that's your feedback wire. And so this would technically be a closed loop motor. But there's all different varieties of these linear actuators and they aren't all diagnosed the same way. But this one here was obviously good to go, unfortunate. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching this. I hope you liked this video. And if you do, please give me a like down below. YouTube uses those likes to help other people figure out that my videos are worth watching. It's part of their algorithm. It is what it is, but I appreciate every single like and please comment down below because I love hearing you guys' stories. I love hearing from you guys in general. It makes my day, it really does. So thanks again for watching guys. Tear down of a linear actuator. Hope you enjoyed it.